Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. And thanks for your support. Was King Arthur a real person? We've all heard stories about King Arthur of Camelot, who according to medieval legend led British forces, including his trusted Knights of the Round Table, in battle against Saxon invaders in the early 6th century. But was King Arthur actually a real person, or simply a hero of Celtic mythology? Though debate has gone on for centuries, historians have been unable to confirm that Arthur really existed. He doesn't appear in the only surviving contemporary source about the Saxon invasion, in which the Celtic monk Gildas wrote of a real-life battle at Mons Badonicus, Badon Hills, around 500 AD. Several hundred years later, Arthur appears for the first time in the writings of a Welsh historian named Nennius, who gave a list of twelve battles the warrior king supposedly fought. All drawn from Welsh poetry, the battles took place in so many different times and places that it would have been impossible for one man to have participated in all of them. Who was King Arthur, and was he real? All that is known, with even the least degree of certainty, is that a man named Arthur, or Archurus, led a band of heroic warriors who spearheaded the resistance of Britons against the invading Saxons, Jutes, and others from the north of Europe, sometime in the 5th and 6th centuries AD. Another theory claims that Arthur was a Roman centurion named Lucius Artorius Castus, who fought against the Picts, northern tri tribes that constituted the largest kingdom in Dark Age Scotland, on Hadrian's Wall in the 2nd century AD, some 300 years earlier than the time at which Arthur's dates are normally set. Even Arthur's birthplace and base of operations are questionable. Camelot, the castled city associated with King Arthur, was likely invented by the 12th century French poet Crétine de Troyes. Arthur's association with Cornwall and parts of Wales is an idea fostered by 18th century antiquarians such as William Stukeley, who carried out one of the first archaeological investigations at Cadbury Castle in Somerset, long believed in local folklore to be the original site of Camelot. Guinevere. According to Geoffrey of Monmouth, Arthur married Gan Humera, Guinevere is a romanticized French version of the name created in the late 12th century. Mordred. The character of Mordred, the treacherous nephew, is based upon the 1st century BC King Mandabracius of the Trinovans, in Essex, a prince who betrayed his uncle to Julius Caesar. Lancelot. There is no equivalent of Lancelot in the earliest accounts of Arthur, his queen Gan Humera instead committing adultery with Mordred. Merlin. In the earliest accounts, Merlin and Arthur never meet, the wizard being the chief advisor to Arthur's father Uther, and his uncle, Ambrosius Aurelianus. The Round Table. Added to the story of Arthur in the 12th and 13th centuries, the concept of the Brotherhood of Knights appealed to the medieval concept of chivalry. Tintagel. Cited as the place of Arthur's conception, Tintagel was indeed a significant fortress and port throughout the 5th and 6th centuries AD. The Holy Grail. Added in the late 12th century, the quest for the Holy Grail adds a greater sense of both chivalry and religious destiny to the story of Arthur. The Sword in the Stone. There is no mention of a sword in the stone prophesy for Arthur in the earliest accounts of his life. Arthur simply in inherits the kingdom from his father, Uther. Excalibur. Although named swords play an important part in Celtic folklore, Arthur's sword was called Caliban. What was King Arthur's Round Table, and how many knights of the Round Table were there? The Round Table is the centerpiece of the Arthurian world. According to the 13th century poet Lyman, Arthur ordered the table to be built for him by a famous Cornish carpenter, who somehow made the table capable of seating 1,600 men, clearly an exaggeration, yet easily portable to wherever Arthur set up his mobile base of operations. Other stories suggest it was Merlin, the king's magician, who made the table, round he said, in the likeness of the world, and who sent out a call to the bravest and truest knights to join a great fellowship whose task was to care for the disenfranchised, especially women, and who would do no harm to anyone who did not deserve it. King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, after a 14th century miniature, from Les Arts au Moyen Age, published in Paris in 1873. Photo by Universal History Archive slash UIG via Getty Images. Some 150 knights were said to have sat at the round table. Their adventures lead us into a magical realm of wonder, 
where fairy women test the nobility of the knights by offering them seemingly impossible tasks, and strange creatures lurk in the shadows of a vast forest, in whose depth are clearings where castles, chapels, hermitages, and ruins are found, some empty, others containing dangerous foes. When they had largely rid the land of monsters, dragons, and evil customs, the knights undertook their greatest task of all, the quest for the Holy Grail. Many did not return. Where did the story of the quest for the Holy Grail come from? The greatest task undertaken by Arthur's knights was the quest for the Grail, a mysterious vessel linked to the Passion of Christ, the story of Jesus Christ's arrest, trial, suffering, and eventual execution by crucifixion. According to the 12th century poet Robert de Boron, the Grail was used to celebrate the Last Supper, and afterwards by Christ's uncle, Joseph of Arimathea, to catch some of the blood that flowed from the Savior as his body was taken down from the cross. When did Christianity arrive in Britain? But did you know that earlier stories from the mythology of the Celts can be seen as precursors of the Grail? They spoke of cauldrons of plenty that provided food for heroes and could even bring the dead to life. But once the links with Christian belief were established in the 12th century, the Grail became a holy relic sought by mystics and heroes, and, most famously, by Arthur's Fellowship. All 150 knights of the Round Table are said to have gone forth in search of the sacred vessel after it appeared at Camelot during Pentecost, a feast celebrated each year on the 50th day after the Great and Holy Feast of Pacha, Easter and 10 days after the Feast of the Ascension of Christ. Of those who went forth only three succeeded in their quest to find the Grail, the saintly knight Sir Galahad, the simple Sir Percival, and the honest, plain-spoken Sir Bors. Many other knights perished, and this undoubtedly weakened both the Round Table and Arthur's court, preparing the way for the dark days to come when Arthur's illegitimate son Mordred rose up against him and ended the dream of Camelot. Lancelot and Guinevere, what happened and what became of them? The love story of Lancelot and Guinevere, originating in France, became one of the best known of the Arthurian tales. Lancelot was the greatest knight of the Round Table and Arthur's most trusted ally, but it was his illicit love for Queen Guinevere that made him famous. The Seven Best Couples in History Later versions of the story extended Lancelot and Guinevere's love into a full-blown affair, which in the end brought down the Round Table and ushered in the end of Arthur's reign when Lancelot rescued the Queen, who had been condemned to burn at the stake, and in the process killed several of Arthur's knights. With the king reluctantly forced to attack Lancelot, the way was left open for Mordred to attack Camelot. But did you know that in early versions of the legend, Guinevere spurns Lancelot? The 12th century poet Cratine de Troyes gave us an account of their romance in his Lancelot, or the Knight of the Cart, c. 1177. No stories before this feature Lancelot, so we must assume that Cratine invented him. The Rail King Arthur and his Lancelot, Henry the Young King and William Marshall, Cratine's story tells a dramatic tale of Guinevere's abduction by a lord named Melwas, who had fallen in love with the queen, and of Lancelot's efforts to rescue her. In order to reach Melwas' castle, where she is held, Lancelot is forced to ride in a cart, a vehicle reserved for criminals on their way to the gallows. But Lancelot hesitates for a moment, and when Guinevere learns of this this later on she spurns him as not worthy of her affections. Love stories feature a great deal in the Arthurian world. Tristan and Isolde, for example, best known these days from Wagner's 1859 opera that retold their story, were famous doomed lovers. How does King Arthur die, and what does Mordred have to do with it? The Battle of Camlin is said to have been King Arthur's final battle. Weakened by the losses incurred during the quest for the Grail, and then by the scandal of Lancelot and Guinevere, Arthur's kingdom began to break apart. War broke out after Lancelot staged an armed rescue of Guinevere, condemned to death for her treasonous love for the great knight. In the heat of battle Lancelot killed two of Arthur's best men, Gareth and Gaheris, who had defended the queen. Their brother, the famous knight Sir Gawain, thus became Lancelot's most bitter foe, and as Arthur was forced to respond to Lancelot's rescue of the queen, he reluctantly led an army to France to attack him. Where is King Arthur buried? Belief in Arthur's expected return to his country was kept alive in stories for many years by the people of Britain. Arthur's bones were supposedly found at Glastonbury Abbey in 1191, though this was nothing more than a fabrication designed to quell the belief that Arthur would return to expel the invading Normans. Nevertheless, some bones were indeed interred in a black marble tomb in 1278 at the expense of Edward I. To this day, countless new books, films, television shows and plays continue to be created about King Arthur, adding to the popularity of the legends, which remain among the most familiar and best-loved stories of all time.
Thank you for watching see you again for another interesting facts and amazing stories and also please like and subscribe.